Hey guys, it's Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films back again with Doctor Who Classic. Last time around, we started re-watching Genesis of the Daleks. What was that one about? Well, they end up on Scarrow, and there's this uh, leader named uh, Davros, who seems to be, you know, some kind of uh, horribly disfigured person, although they never explained why. Uh, you know, he... He's assume we assume he's one of the college, but he's all disfigured and anyway, and he's in a half chair, a movable chair that kind of half resembles the Dalek. He's trying to create them ultimately, but even some of the scientists working on the project think that uh, what he's done is is not good, uh, and that's essentially where we left it because we uh, left off right in the middle of it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, they are currently at war with the Thals, and. Uh, the Thals have a rocket, which should destroy the Khaled race, but uh, the Khaled dome is impenetrable. But Davros gave them a formula to weaken the Khaled dome so that they could wipe out the Khaled people. So, he's kind of playing both sides, yeah. very Emperor Palpatine, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but still, 1975, this came first. Yeah. So, um... So, yeah, I don't fully remember why he's playing both sides, though. I guess just for the creation uh, for the creation of the Daleks, specifically, which will be the final evolution of the Khaled people. Um, and I think the Doctor is... I think the Doctor just thwarted the, the rocket launch at the Thal Dome. I think that's where we left off. So... <laughs> Um, it's been a few minutes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much where we are. Do um, you have anything else? Uh, no. Um, enjoying retirement. Been busy, just uh, had auditions for my show. And uh, as soon as the show's over, going to start writing my new play. All right. <laughs> There's your life update. So now, uh, with the shortest intro we've ever done... Let's jump right back into Genesis of the Daleks. Here we go. His hair is even more electrified than normal. No. Oh, perhaps he it's did working. not thwart it. The Khaled Dome is breaking up. No! Boy, you don't want to hit the wrong button there, apparently. <laughs> I guess without the rest of the Khaled people, there's not too many people to oppose the Daleks. You have been conditioned and programmed to complete a task. You will now carry out that program. We are well. Now, it's such a strange thing, too with this new master race he's created, he's not a part of it. And I don't think he can be a part of it. Let us now show that whilst we were ruthless in war, we are generous in victory. Let all prisoners be freed, charges against them dropped. Issue that statement at once. Okay. The Khaled government was on the point of stopping Davros' experiments. Rather than let that happen, he helped you to destroy his own race. He never convinced my people of that. Davros is a hero. I feel like that's kind of a weird thing, like, the Thal, the hero to the Thals is a Khaled, specifically. You know, it'd be faster if you came to me to that get these files. The no sense of right or wrong, no pity. They'll be without feeling or emotion. Correct. Now see that my orders are carried out. But you... Without question, Garman. You have ordered mine here. Hmm. Yeah, now you got it. Yeah. I guess maybe they just push through the bodies. Damn that peripheral vision. The ultimate killing machines. They can't see. If the whole of the scientific core act against Stavros, he can't proceed. We can then demand that the Dalek project is halted. 
His whole concept is monstrous. It's evil and immoral. What do you want me to do? I mean, the government tried this, and the word. they exploded. Look out, Harry! <laughs> <laughs> I'll never eat oysters again. Very fast. It's obviously why Davros discarded. Come on, we're there. I want to see like all of his rough sketches and how he ended on a pepper pot. <laughs> Who can you count on? Carvel, Frenton, Parin. But there'll be more soon, I'm sure of it. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. I mean, you gotta be careful about this, man. That information will prove most. I don't know how you didn't see my glow-in-the-dark eyeball. A little surgery on the brain will remove these stupid emotions and still allow us to make use of his inventive skills. And the other plotters? The same for them, but we must move carefully. Not force them. It just occurred to me that neither there with his nasally voice it sounds a lot like the six-fingered man in The Princess Bride. Hmm. The Dalek menace always remains. If, as you say, they become the supreme creatures of war, how can they lose? How can they fail? Misfortune, lack of information, sometimes overwhelming opposition. Yes, but Him. tell me. If I tell you what you want to know, I betray millions of people in the future. I can't do that. But you can! You will tell me! You will tell me! Alrighty, that's part four. It's amazing how much of this I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, because I've, I've forgotten about the, I guess, the Khaled Rebellion going on. Um, let the credits roll there. I wanted to see who the, the girl was that he was talking to that is starting the rebellion. Harriet Philbin. All right, never mind. She looks very similar to someone who used to be on the uh, late 60s and early 70s American TV show Laugh-In. Uh, Judy somebody who was British, but I can't remember her name. Hmm. Um, you know, the whole thing with removing the conscious. Well, first off, a am I crazy or are there two different spellings of the word conscious? Because I'm not sure. There's conscious, which is being aware of something, being awake, and then there's conscience, with an N in it, which is knowing the difference between right and wrong. Okay, that must be what I... Well, I've definitely mixed up, like, eight of them, then. Oh, well. Alright, yeah, so if you are conscious, that means you're awake. If you're unconscious, sleeping, in a coma, whatever, but if you are said to have a conscience, it means you know that something that you're about to do is wrong and you decide not to do it because of that. Right. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to put that on the British or the Americans or anything. I'm going to put that on English in general. <laughs> so, that is that is confusing. Um, but anyway, the whole removal of the conscious, that... It's honestly strange. You wonder why... Why is Davros doing a lot of this, you know? Like, why does he... You know, the Doctor says, like, oh, you could make them a force for good or across the universe. But he doesn't. And it's like, well, why not? Like, we don't really know anything about Davros. Yeah. Like, why... Which, I mean, I, I don't need, like, a full detailed history. But it's like, what is his motivation in, <laughs> in creating the Daleks, you know? Yeah. Well, again... Uh, what has happened to him because he seems not to have much of a conscience. Yeah. You know, uh, he has essentially started this gigantic scientific unit to create the Daleks, knowing that by removing their conscience that they will become supreme killing machines. But again, unless he survives to rule over that, it doesn't make much sense. You know, that's like unleashing, uh, you know, the, the doomsday machine with no thought of how or what will be left once you have 
succeeded in, in putting everything under your control. Yeah, because it's... I mean, <laughs> this slightly... And this is a terrible comparison, but it slightly reminds me of the underwater menace where it's like, oh, why does he want to blow up Atlantis? Because he can. Yeah. Because he has that, like, oh, I have all this you know, power, I could destroy Atlantis and, you know, just blow it straight into the sky. Yeah. Well, you don't have to do that. Because this is not about preserving the Khaled race. They're gone. With the exception of some of these scientists and a few of the elite soldiers, the Khaled race is completely gone. And I don't think they're going to be transformed into Daleks. Yeah. This is where her whole... Uh, where's our bucket with money in it? This uh, is where the whole Master Race in World War II uh, comparison seems to break down. Because the idea, even though Hitler himself was not you know, the Nordic ideal, the tall, blonde-haired, blue-eyed uh, type, the idea there was we're going to create this Master Race get rid of all the undesirables and that way earth will become su uh, supposedly some kind of you know nordic utopia but that doesn't seem to be the end game here i mean maybe it is if he's just that i'm going to create the ultimate master race but i guess he's he won't be a part of it maybe he's just doing this because it's to him, that's the right thing, to create this perfect race. Science has the power to do this, even though he will not be a part of it. There's actually a story later on in Modern Doctor Who where, because it's sci-fi, Davros comes back. <laughs> um, and the Doctor realizes, wait a minute, you're not in control of the Daleks here. Like, he looks around and it's like, this is a dungeon. The Daleks have revived you just to use you for your science, but you don't have this. And Davros is basically says, we have come to an agreement. <laughs> I help them, and that's and they don't kill me, basically. But that's basically it, is that he does not rule over the Daleks yeah. because he is not a part of that race. He is a Khaled. Now, with two episodes left, I, I certainly don't remember what going this way, but, again, from a an analytical point the argument could be made that again if we're comparing this to the rise of Nazism that the Daleks are the Nazis attempt to invent the atomic bomb because with the atomic bomb then they would be able to literally wipe out large sections of undesirables uh, of course they weren't aware of the, the uh, fallout and radiation all that sort of thing I'm sure right. uh, at the first as we weren't either uh, but again, that doesn't seem to be where this is going. A again, it's you know, it's Frankenstein's monster. You are creating what you cons consider to be the perfect sp human specimen, but the brain is damaged. The you know the, the the philosophy is damaged, and therefore you are unable to control it. Yeah, it's. I guess you could also say it would be like if they made a movie where time travelers they went back in time to kill Hitler but it was the end of the war anyway and so it's like well you know you have this story of you know we have to kill Hitler or something like that but if you're coming in towards the end you have missed the rest of that story the rest of World War II so it could honestly be that Davros the problem is we're seeing it right at the end of the war between the Thals and the Khaleds and the creation of the Daleks, where there seems to be a 1,000 year history, and we don't really know how far, you know, how much a part of that he is, you know? And it's entirely possible, just with whatever he's done to himself, that he could be a couple hundred years old. And because of that, now, like, we're just seeing him, like, I will create the ultimate master race, but we haven't gotten the why because we just don't know too yeah. much about this war. And Ronson did say he's become a megalomaniac, so maybe he doesn't need in his own mind a reason to do this. It's, again, like you said, because he can. Yeah, like in The Underwater Menace. But it's way better than that. So, <laughs> it's way better than that story, so there's at least that. The Dalek invasion of the Earth in the year 2000 was foiled because of an attempt by the Daleks to mine the core of the planet. 
That was the year 2000? Now, future errors will be eradicated. Defeats will become victories. You have changed the future of the universe, Doctor. I have betrayed the future. Well, that would only apply to one. Then there's new battles after that. They are conditioned simply to survive. They can survive only by becoming the dominant species. When all other life forms are suppressed, when the Daleks are the supreme rulers of the universe, then you will have peace. Wars will end. What are they going to do then? The power not to hold in my hand a capsule that contains such power. To know that life and death on such a scale was my choice. To know that the tiny pressure on my thumb, enough to break the glass, would end everything. Yes. I would do it. That power would set me up above the gods. And through the Daleks, I shall have that power. But will you have that power? The Dalek creatures are to be destroyed. Heavenly order cannot be countermanded. This order cannot. Oh, milk it. <laughs> hey, that's your five Damn seconds of fame. You've got to recover that time ring. Because without it, we'll never get off this planet. But where is it? It's on the desk in the main laboratory. And then there's that tape recording that Mara took. We've got to get it back at all costs. It would make the Daleks invincible. Come on. You know, I guess it makes sense that they would have a old school tape for all that because they said technology has been degressing. Shoot them. Shoot them all. Been enough of killing and violence. I'll take him away and lock him up with the others. <laughs> enough of violence, but here, take Stop this machine gun. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, they're just gonna start shooting the kneecaps. You mean that you and they will find out exactly what I mean all in good time. Now carry out my orders. Hmm. Maybe put everyone who's left in the college race in one room where the Daleks can come in. I'm going to kill everything in the incubation room. I'm going to destroy the Daleks forever. You know, I get the plan, but shouldn't the Time Lords realize that's going to mess with all of time? You said that Davros had agreed to meet us here. He'll be here. I am here. If you just waited a second. Now, I wonder if that was mechanically controlled or if he's, you know, Fred Flintstoning his feet under there. I would imagine it's the latter. Very well. It's agreed. The meeting will take place in one hour from now. Arrange it. You may go. He's got to suspect, right? Uh, that Davros has a plan. Doctor? Doctor, are you alright? Yeah. Something you could get at a seafood joint. <laughs> yeah, I'm fond of most seafood, but I won't eat squid. Meh. Okay, so. I guess to sort of correct something we said last episode was. Because we weren't sure why Davros is doing all this. I suppose the original plan for the Daleks was to be the Khaleds. So everyone there, that species evolves into that and they have their armor. It's sort of a roundabout way of, you know, evolving, but sure. But is it that 
the Khaleds living right now were to become squids. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Or are or were these people supposed to just be the remnants of the old Khaled race? But either way, this would be the future of the Khaled race, even if it's not these guys specifically. And the objection is to removing the conscious. And doing that will make them these evil creatures. But why... I guess then that just brings up the question of why does Davros do that? Yeah. If he loses the support of all the Khaled people, why does he insist on making the Daleks like that? Is it just because he's looking at this from a scientific standpoint or a he's at a cold calculating, well, if they are to if the Khaled race is to survive, we must become this. If, but if we're going to become this, those the Daleks have to survive. The only way for the Daleks to survive, as he said, is to become the dominant race in the universe. And the dominant race in the universe isn't going to be like that through, you know, hugs and handshakes. So, Well, yeah, that, it appears that he's saying um, you cannot please everyone. You know, democracy and all that sort of thing he was talking about uh, in pejorative terms. So what he's saying is they are not evil because they do not know what is right and wrong. All they know is to survive. And yeah. once they've become the dominant species, then there will be peace because there will be nothing but uniformity. Yeah, there will only be the Daleks. What they're going to do after that... Yeah. They, there's ne they never figure that part out of what happens next, you know? You, you never plan that far ahead, you know? Um, so, yeah, I guess that's it. And this isn't, like, a flaw of the episode or anything, I think. It's just sort of, you know, we're just trying to understand Davros's plan, you know? And, and it is sort of a... It is sort of a thing, too, of, like, well, we made these Daleks. They were these interesting robot things in 1963. All right. They're the most popular thing. Well, we need to expand on them. Okay, how do you take that and you make it into a fleshed out, you know, three-dimensional species? And they've just sort of taken this backwards way of figuring out how to flesh them out. So... This is the original retcon, apparently. Yeah. It's... I mean, it's sort of the same way of, like, you know... I'm sure, you know, George Lucas had a lot of plans with Star Wars, but, you know, in 1977, when Alec Guinness says, oh, yes, I fought in the Clone Wars, did did George Lucas know what that really meant? <laughs> I don't think he did, you know? So, and I think that's... I think there's a video somewhere that, like, shows what the original Clone Wars was supposed to be. It was supposed to be literally clones you know clones of luke or anakin or someone else you know and that is the sort of uh war there but then it evolved into or changed into well it's the clone army going against the droid army basically so yeah it's that sort of thing of you know 1963 they bring on terry nation like hey can you write a story for this new show we've got he writes this and then they're like oh this is popular okay how do we turn how do we turn these pepper pots into a believable interesting species they they went with nazis and they had to roll with that so but even to for example knowing what we know about nazism that's easier to understand than the daleks yeah i mean because at least with with germany and nazi germany there was previously a Germany, and people did things aside from being in, you know, the Nazi party and everything. There was art, there was creation, there was architecture, there was all this stuff. So, theoretically, if, you know, they got rid of all the impures and it was just, you know, the, 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 the perfect master race, there's things you can do. What are these squids going to be doing if they are the last race in the universe? You know? Because we never see that. It is... That's also a problem I have with Star Wars, where it's like, 
there's Star Wars is the most believably unbelievable world where like the world building is great and terrible at the same time in Star Wars because it's like if you're not working in like a factory for the Empire I don't know what people do for like a living or they sell drugs or something I don't know what people do there's no like there's not a lot of art there's not movies there's not books there's none of that so I don't know what happens in Star Wars if you're not in the Empire or part of the Rebellion you know so it's sort of the same thing here of like except worse here probably where it's like what what is a universe that is just the Daleks and Davros didn't think that far ahead I guess so just touch these two strands together and the Daleks are finished have I that right to destroy the Daleks you can't doubt it but I do you see some things could be better with the Daleks Many future worlds will become allies just because of their fear of the Daleks. If someone who knew the future pointed out a child to you and told you that that child would grow up totally evil, to be a ruthless dictator who would destroy millions of lives, could you then kill that child? We're talking about the Daleks, the most evil creatures ever invented. You must destroy them. You must complete your mission for the Time Lords. Do I have the right? Simply touch one wire against the other. And it's it. The Daleks cease to exist. Hundreds of millions of people, thousands of generations can live without fear, in peace, and never even know and the Harry word Harry just doesn't do it. No. My weight. Wipe out a whole intelligent life form. Then I become like them. I'd be no better than the Daleks. Think of all the suffering they'll be... Great line, remember, in uh, the Eccleston. You would have made a good Dalek. Well... Yeah. There'll be a complete landslide against any further development of the Daleks. Well, that's so clearly a trap. I'm grateful to you, Garmin. More grateful than I can tell you. The meeting's about to begin. Will you come? Yes. I mean, there is also one thing they didn't bring up. If you destroy the Daleks... That doesn't mean there won't be another equally terrible species in the new future. Any one of you would destroy everything that we have ever achieved. Then here is a destruct button. Press it, and you will destroy this bunker and everything. Total in it. destruct. Only no. this room will remain. The goofy-looking button. Press it, and I allowed this charade to be played out for one reason only. To find those men who were truly loyal to me, and to discover those who would betray me. You've got a gun. Me. Shoot him. I no. will go on. Bang. You are insane, Devros. But they don't want bloodshed. You get bloodshed if you defend yourselves. No. You can shoot him now. I'm going back to the incubator room. This time I'm going to blow it up. Let us come with you. No. Get out of here. Hurry up. Come on. Evidently he's changed his mind. Oh, he got his coat back too. And his hat. Oh, he's not going to make the choice. Only they could look you down. You will obey only my commands. The production line is to be halted immediately. You heard my order. Obey. Obey. Neither. Yes, Davros. He didn't think about this part. I did finish. Well, contain you. I created you. I am the master, not you. I, I, I. Our programming does not permit us to acknowledge that any creature is superior to a Dalek. Have pity. Pity. I have no understanding of the word. It is not registered in my vocabulary bank. Exterminate. 
Well, Bye, thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you. And the Thals are off to become hippies. Hands on the time ring. You see, I know that although the Daleks will create havoc and destruction for millions of years, I know also that out of their evil must come something good. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> well, the last little twirly bit was a little silly. Yeah. Oh well. <sighs> but you know they are right. Uh, what happened at the end of World War Two is that most of the European countries came together uh, with the United States and Canada in uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. You know, and so it did. You know, start the development of I, you know, I don't want to say a, a global uh, unification process, but it it does build a group of people willing to stand together against uh, fascism, you know, autocracy and things like that. Whether it comes from you know Germany or Russia or China or anywhere else, including in the United States, I guess. So uh, it's still roughly the allegory that we thought it should have been. It just had some kind of unusual spots there. Yeah. So. <sighs> Definitely, I mean, a very, very good Dalek story. Yeah. So, um, probably, I mean, what are the Dalek stories we've had so far? Uh, the Daleks, the original Daleks. The Dalek Invasion of Earth. The Daleks Master Plan. The Power of the Daleks. The Chase. The Chase. I forgot about the Chase. Uh, the Evil of the Daleks. Planet of the Daleks. Planet of the Daleks. The Day of the Daleks. And now this. And this. Oh, and death to the Daleks. <laughs> That's probably one of the worst ones. Um, but yeah, so of those ten Dalek stories, uh, probably I'd say this one ranks at the top um, with probably Day of the Daleks maybe coming in at, at second. So, and... You know, we kind of joked last episode, like, oh, this one's good because it doesn't focus on the Daleks. You know, like, sort of like Day of the Daleks. But at the same time, this does work because while it's not technically about the Daleks, it's about the Khaleds. So, if if I could only have one other thing, it would also be a bit more of the Thals. Because I feel like the Thals were just there. They didn't really do a lot in this episode. But... Other than that, still, a, a very solid story overall. So, um, and the ending of the Daleks betraying Davros, I mean, that does kind of make the most sense, you know? And the whole thing of Davros not realizing that he cannot rule over the Daleks because they they are supposed to be superior even to the Khaleds. So, yeah, so that was interesting. Um, now, again, uh, directorially speaking, uh, kind of an interest, and I understand exactly why they did that thing at the end. You know, you, they tried uh, Davros, uh, but if he, even in his death, could have, you know, hit the button, or, you know, so that there was an explosion, so that the last thing you saw is, you know, literally the Daleks semi buried in the rubble, but then it lifts its eye stalk up and very. Instead of, you know, screaming that we will survive, just, you know, the Daleks will survive, we will be back. It just, you know, something that would make it a little creepier rather than so, you know, blatant there. At yeah, because, I mean, well, it's interesting the fact that they just can't get through, like, some rocks for a thousand years, apparently. But, I mean, the whole thing is that the production line is still in operation, so they can still create Daleks, they just can't do anything for roughly a thousand years as the doctor said so like i i get that because i guess then the next question is can the daleks if the destruction if the production line was destroyed could the daleks rebuild it you would think the superior race would be able to do that but they don't really have hands they have plungers so i don't know but that was sort of the thing that Davros was saying too. It's like, well, we should just continue creating the Daleks because it's all done. It's all automated. We just, you know, have to sit back and watch them being created. So, 
Um, so I get that, and that would have been interesting, and maybe even leaving it open ended. But I don't know. It, it still works. So okay. So uh, we had the rocket destroying the Khaled Dome, and uh, and Davros being the hero of the Thals momentarily. So now, uh, again, minor thing. The uh, the footage, the film footage of the rocket launch, that looked like an intercontinental ballistic missile, well, yeah. which is supposed to go you know across oceans and so forth. But from the map that we saw, the the uh, Thal's base was you know only you know ten, fifteen, twenty miles. Yeah, so it seemed like a huge rocket for that short distance. They're just over the mountains, I think. So yeah, that's true. Um, but let's see. Uh, but I guess we just had everything about uh, Davros and the master race of the Daleks. And you do, again, I guess it's just sort of the thing. And that ending just sort of shows that Davros, he hadn't thought everything through. And, you know, where we're questioning, you know, how, how do you create, why do you create this master race the way that he has, you know? And I guess the whole thing, you know, as well... There's aggression, you know, taking out these emotions so that they become the master race. But why have you wanted to do this? It's not simply for the Khaled survival. It's like, because that's the thing is this whole 1000 year war has been about, you know, who will reign over who, the Khaleds or the Thals. But Davros is just playing on a completely different level. It's like, well, it will be neither. It will be the Daleks. And then because of how brilliantly I've created them, they will rule over the entire universe. You can't leave the planet yet. He doesn't have, you know, comprehension of time travel or anything like that, but he has planned that far ahead. But why has he planned that far ahead? <laughs> Maybe somebody in the uh, comments can suggest to us. We have plenty of people who have studied Doctor Who. Unlike us, we have yeah. never studied this. We're just this is literally real time reactions. Right. Uh, and I remembered the the girl's name from the uh, Laugh In that looked a lot like the the Barrett or whatever her name was there. Uh, Judy Carn was an uh, 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 English actress who uh, was very funny on the Laugh In program. So, hmm. um, so yeah, so that's just sort of interesting, and I wonder if because. I remember when we watched it was Remembrance of the Daleks. That's when that's at least the first time we've seen that Davros came back. But I don't that's another one of those I don't really remember what <laughs> happened in that one. I remember it being a good episode. I remember the spaceship landing there in the courtyard of the school. Yeah. But I don't remember anything else about that episode, like what the plot was. No, I, I remember that when they came in they saw the book on the French Revolution sitting on the desk, which right. meant that they were getting there literally just seconds after Susan and, and the Doctor and Ian and Barbara left. Right, yeah, because it was supposed to be for the uh, 25th anniversary. But yeah, so I'm not sure if there was anything else there with Davros. Although I think there was like a, a Dalek civil war between, like, I guess Imperial Daleks or something, and then the Daleks under Davros, so maybe he f maybe he wised up and he made Daleks that'll actually listen to him. I don't know. But, yeah. We'll get to that soon. Yeah. You know, um, in what, ten years? Something like that. Ten seasons? Yeah. Now, now uh, Tom Baker only did, like, seven seasons, did he? Or, or did he do ten, ten years? I'm not sure. It might... Well, season... 19 which we watched which had uh kenda with the fifth doctor so that would at least be seven seasons there so somewhere around there um so yeah uh and i don't know if davros has any other appearances in classic doctor who uh, or if they're gonna like go into that a bit more of why did he want to do a lot of this because it is sort of you know I mean, I guess it's an interesting thing of, like, well, where everyone else is concerned with the war between the Thals and the Khaleds, he's thinking, you know, much more grander. But you just sort of stop and question, why has he thought this grand, you know? Uh, but then again, maybe that's another World War II thing of, like, you know, sure, Hitler had his plans, but then you look at some of it, and it's 
one thing that's always interesting is when like a movie will bring up Hitler's fascination in the occult. And it's just sort of a thing of like, okay, I guess I understand why he would do this. But at the same time, it's like, shouldn't you come up with like strategies and like plans for, you know, places and stuff? Why are you looking at the occult? Do you have time for that? The thing is, he was he was a man who had a mesmerizing personality, apparently, and he was a great speaker. But like other megalomaniacs, he really didn't have the scientific or even the military mind to to go behind that. Leo. So I, I guess he had people for that. So and yeah. then he started looking up a bunch of weird crap. So because I've seen that because there's there's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, and I guess a bit of Last Crusade too, uh, with the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy Grail, and then let's see, uh, that's basically kind of what Hydra is in the first Captain America movie when they're when they find the Tesseract, and then in uh, in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, that's part of the plot is that the Nazis are in Mexico to find one of the gods of vampires to see if that will help the Nazis. Spoiler alert, it does not. So, uh, instead, they unleash the gods of all vampires, and it <laughs> makes everything worse. So, um, so yeah, I guess that could just be a thing of, like, well, Davros's imagination, it just kept going, and he, he created the Daleks without stopping and being like, well, do I need this right now? You know, because it's not a thing of, Let's win the war, and then we'll do this. It's, But I guess with a war going on for a thousand years, he just had to take the most drastic measure, which is the creation of the Daleks, which involved the genocide of his own people. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. Because, um, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm still trying to figure out I, I guess it sh I should just stop and be like, well, I'm not going to understand his plan fully. Because I still question, were the Khalids that were alive suppo supposed to be turned into those Daleks? And I'm not sure. Because if he's creating these new Dalek you know, creatures, how much of them comes from a Khalid as well, yeah. you know? It, at that point, it's when they keep saying, like, oh, well, the Khalid people will evolve into this. But this isn't like uh, the mutants, where they literally did uh, have a metamorphosis, metamorphosis into these, you know, uh, bugs, and then eventually into the Technicolor Dreamcoat thing. <laughs> um, it seems like they're just creating a new creature, but do the Khalids actually become that? Was Davros going to become that? No. It's just that he didn't get a chance to, and the Daleks that he created were like, well, we're not going to let you. We're yeah. just going to kill you now. Now, I know that uh, this is controversial, and feel free if you need to to clip this out, but our uh, <clears throat> former president uh, was very similar to some of these autocrats in that he was able to harness you know, the anger and the despair. But when you got right down to it, this guy didn't know squat. You know, he had no military expertise. Uh, he really had no financial expertise. The man, you know, bankrupted a dozen or more uh, different uh, companies. But again, he tapped into that that populism, that, that angst and, you know, the anti-establishment thing, but then couldn't do anything with it because he literally had no idea how to actually make that work. Right, right. And and I guess if that's the thing about Davros is he's at least a brilliant scientist. Yes. So there is at least that, but you're right, it is sort of that thing of like, well, you won the people over. Now what are you going to do with that? And I guess either not a lot or I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It's like what what came from this, you know? And and I mean, you, and I'm sure people could argue some things, but it's like, well, you know, and again, if this is getting too political, you can probably s skip ahead. We'll talk about some something else, World War Two or something. Um, but it is sort of the same thing of like, well, you know, we did all this talk of we're gonna build a wall, okay? 
how? How are you going to do that? And, and everything, and it just, four years came and went, and not a lot. Not a lot came from that. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, we're talking, we're talking about Trump and everything. It's, again, it's not like we're the only country that's also been through this, you yeah. know? I'm sure there's uh, <clears throat> some people in the UK right now that are dealing with uh, uh, that whole uh, Brexit thing and wondering when that's going to happen. And I hate, I do kind of hate to bring that up because the last time we brought that up, I did see a little bit of a debate about Brexit in our comments. Yeah. So, uh, so just chill out if, if that sparks yeah. again. But anyway. I mean, again, that whole America first agenda, the, the, you know, our country first. Uh, sure, if you go back 50, 75 years, but n there are too many people in all of these countries who say we cannot go back to the past. It's not only do we not want to, we, we can't. I mean, you have to understand that it is now a global economy, that everything, the pandemic proved that it's all global, that we're all interactive, we're all interconnected. There is no way to prevent information or disease or commerce to be contained within a single entity like a country. So it's just, you know, we have to accept the future, whether we like it or not, this is the way it's going to happen. Yeah, well, and just the thing of like, you know, like, well, it's just, it'll just be America. And it's like, but it's never been that way because ever since we, you know, uh, we told the British that's not how you spell aluminum, as from the first moment we did that, the French were there. Yeah. Because, and of course the French jumped on that, you know, to, because they also wanted to you teach the British a thing or two, but yeah, it's like the French were always there. So that, so that already doesn't work. Like yeah. it's, you can't have it. It's just, well, it's just us. It's like, well, you're either going to go back before the first world war pretty much. And that's impossible. Or you're still going to have the French, which have always, they've always sort of been, you know, buddies with us and stuff. So it's like, that just, it doesn't work. You it know? doesn't work. Yes. And it's the same thing that, you know, we say, problems with brexit but all the way back if to tie us back to world war ii to tie us back to hitler and that sort of thing you know it's like it this this doesn't work if you have there are th values i suppose you can have but that fundamentally just doesn't work so yeah anywho <laughs> where were we you know some people say that uh doctor who nowadays it gets too political yeah i like watch the 70s stuff maybe you know back in the 60s with the first doctor i don't know how political that really got but especially between this and the third doctor's era it's like watch this you'll get a conversation out of it yeah. so anyway um well we had the rebellion the no bloodshed rebellion that worked <laughs> that worked out and you know it's not that we're advocating violence yeah but i mean uh I don't know. It's, that's a bit tricky. I mean, I get it. I understand the point of, well, there should be no further bloodshed. We just need to stop all of this. But he was completely insane. Davros was too far gone. Even if you go through all of this, you know Davros will never accept a vote. And he's already made Daleks. So even if you're not going to kill him... You should have immediately just destroyed the Daleks. Because cause that's another thing, too, that they're like, you know... They wanted to create... I wrote down the moral Daleks. Where the Khaleds will evolve into the Daleks, but they will still have all of our emotions and all of our you know flaws and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, that's, that's not good. That's a half measure. You can't do that because that still... That opens too much of the door open to Davros and what he wants. You know, you're just one thing away from getting what he wants. If you're going to go through with this, you know, you say, these Daleks that you've created are immoral, they're not good, we cannot allow this, you kind of have to start from square one, you know? And after everything that's happened, you really need to start from square one just on the survival of the current Khaleds. So... So, yeah, we're not advocating for, I should have just killed them all or something, but you really couldn't just keep the Daleks with the plan you already had. So, um, 
I like the talk between the doctor and Davros about uh, what was it the chemical or something that would wipe out all life basically and you know if Davros had that power would he do it and he said yes and I find that interesting because obviously that would still kill him uh, even though it's like oh it'll put me above the gods and everything but it does kill him and it also reminds me when uh, when the doctor had him, you know, he was going to turn off his life support, basically. And for a second, it seemed like he was willing to cooperate with the doctor. It's like, okay, fine, I will order the destruction of the Daleks to save my life. And it's just kind of interesting. I, I, I guess those almost, you know, oppose each other or everything that Davros did. But it's interesting that Davros still wants to keep his life. Because, especially at the end, it's like, no, you can't do this, you can't kill me, you need me, I need to be there, I need to be a part of this. But you would honestly think he would look at these Daleks who, you know, are not obeying him, and, and he would think, well, this is exactly what I wanted, so go ahead and kill me, you know? So that's an interesting thing of, you know, we talk about Davros's ambition, but it, but he has to be a part of it, too, which is the interesting thing. Uh, let's see. And then, probably the, the biggest thing uh, that also comes from this episode, uh, in terms of Doctor Who, is the Doctor... The Doctor's debate over should he destroy the Daleks completely. And an interesting thing, I didn't... I completely didn't even remember. I thought he just was like, no, I can't do this, this is wrong, I would, I would become like them. But he does. Even though, you know, at the end he's like, well, they still have all their, their science, they can still create Daleks, they have their entire production line, I've only delayed them a bit. But he does go back, you know, once the choice is made by, who was the main guy leading that rebellion? Garmin. Yeah, Garmin. When Garmin makes the choice, like, oh, okay, you make the choice to destroy the Daleks, I don't need to do that. But then after Garmin is killed, he's like, well... I'm going to go kill them then. And that's an interesting thing that it's like, you know, that he would end up doing that. Even if the end result doesn't happen, he's, I still feel like he made that choice to kill all, to commit this genocide, basically. Yeah. And it's also one of those episodes when he was having that debate, I really wish the Brigadier was here. Because I think that would have also been an interesting perspective. Because... I would imagine the Brigadier would say, yes, yeah. you should get rid of them. If it means, you know, getting rid of this, you know, scourge of the universe, you should do it. But I think that would be interesting having that bounce off of the Doctor as well. So, and it is, you know, again, this is the most World War II we've ever discussed in an episode. <laughs> but, you know, the whole thing of like, oh, if you were told that child will grow up to be completely evil. It's basically the baby Hitler argument. Yeah. Do you kill Hitler as a kid, you know, it's like, oh, he hasn't, he hasn't even flunked out of art school, he hasn't done any of this and this, do you kill him? And you just have to sit there and it's like, well, I don't know, because at this point, he hasn't done anything. But, you know the future. But then you also have the question of, well, there's also the question I feel like of, well, if you are going back and you're doing that, does that then guarantee the future? It guarantees a future without Hitler, but doesn't, like you said, doesn't mean that someone else isn't going to rise up like Stalin in his place. Yeah. Uh, the one difference that I've always wondered why people don't talk about this, if you knew what was going to happen, and you made the choice to kill the child, although the doctor says, doesn't that make you just like them? No, because then you turn around and accept the responsibility of what you've done. You go to prison, you know, you face the death sentence if necessary. Uh, you know, but the people who are the megalomaniacs never accept the consequences of their actions. If you choose to do that, you have a conscience. You know what's right and wrong. I know that was wrong, and uh, what I have done was to sacrifice this one life and my own to protect the lives of millions, if not billions, of others. Now, I can't guarantee that there won't be somebody new in the in the future that will come along like that, but I know I can prevent this particular future from happening. Right. Like, if you accept that, you know, there could be another terrible future, there could even be a worse future because of this action, but you're right, if you take responsibility for that, you aren't like the 
that that person yeah. basically. Uh, and you remember in that first season that we watched of The Flash, that's what uh, Eddie Fawn did, realizing what was happening, that knowing that all of this evil came from him, he ends up shooting himself to prevent that future from happening. Right. At the time, yes. It doesn't work. It doesn't work, but unfortunately. But, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, that's that sacrifice, you know. Yeah. Are you willing to sacrifice your own life for what you believe in? Yeah. So, and there's also the possibility of, like, well, you know, you sort of question, am I as bad as them? And even if the answer is yes, but you do, you know, you are taken down for what you have done, even if it's wrong there could be better people that you have now given way to. So it's possible. Yeah. It's an open debate, definitely. <laughs> so. Um. But to me, that was the best part of this entire series, is the debate over, do I have the right to do this? Right. Um, and then, yeah. And, and it's also just an interesting thing, from the perspective of the Time Lords. Again, the Time Lords who seem like they would be completely fine with altering a major part of the universe's history, you know? And, you know, later on, way later on in Doctor Who, <laughs> they they do introduce this sort of uh, division of, you know, sort of Time Lords that they do interfere. They do go and change things because they are like, well, this is bad, you know, this person is bad, we will eliminate them. If something bad comes from that, we'll eliminate that too. But that seems to be so different from the Time Lords themselves. You know, they they don't like to interfere. That's why people like the Doctor and the Master are outcasts, you know, because the Master will go and change history. And the Doctor, while he doesn't want to change history, he will at least go and fight for it yeah. as opposed to just watching. So to have the Time Lords directly send the Doctor to do this, which also you could almost say passes the blame off of them yeah. you know it's like well we sent him to do this but you know we sent him to do this because he will do that he will yeah. try he will make the choice one way or the other we're not going against our values because it's the doctor who has done this that's that uh, uh impossible missions force uh, credo uh be advised that any if you or any of your IM force are captured or killed, we will disavow any knowledge of your existence. Yeah. You know? So this is the mission. If you decide to accept it, you take total responsibility for it. We don't know who you are. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, if something even worse than the Daleks had sprung up from this, the Time Lords probably would pass all the money. There'd be another trial. He'd probably be just executed this time instead of exiled to Earth. So, um... So, yeah. Uh, and then we had uh, entombing the Daleks for a thousand neat and tidy years until the first serial. So, that's good. Um, and the Thals went off to become hippies, apparently. So, Which, I mean, a thousand years, they don't have to fight anybody. Yeah. It's just them and uh, whoever's left of the, uh, uh, the Mutos, the Mutos. Which one was it? It was the Mutos. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, just from a, again from an, a writer standpoint and even a director standpoint, to have the Doctor and all of the Resistance at the end thinking that the, they've they've won, that they've crushed the Daleks, leaving them in that you know sense of euphoria, and then just out of the rubble you see that eye stalk twitch, and the light comes on, and then just very calmly. I mean, this is like you know the hand coming up out of the grave, you know, yeah. when, when somebody's thought to be dead, and just that hear that voice say. We have been stopped, but we will be back, and we will still reign supreme in yeah. the universe. I mean, talk about sending just chills up your spot. Now, that may have been too creepy for the average you know kid who's watching the show, yeah. but that just would have been so much more Dalek than, yeah. than what we saw. Well, I mean, and that, you know, if it's too creepy for the kids, I feel like this is too heavy for the kids. <laughs> like, I'm sure the kids are like, oh the scarf man's going around and they oh, there's the Daleks finally and stuff but this is a heavy episode yeah. honestly so um, so yeah they could have done that and then that could almost leave leave the doctor being like I don't know if I did destroy the Daleks or not and you don't know until the next Dalek story and it's like oh they did survive you know so that could have been interesting yeah. but 
maybe the writers are not willing to think that far ahead. <laughs> we'll we'll leave the thinking far ahead to Davros, right. but not too far. But ahead. Not too far ahead. <laughs> not too far ahead. <laughs> so, alrighty. How long have we been going? No, oh, too long. Uh, for some reason, the timers are different on my recordings, but we've gone about two hours. So seems a little bit longer, but yeah. I mean, there was a lot of topics that uh, we covered in this one. Most of them being World War II, some of them being a bit modern. So, yeah. Um, right. So, yeah. Next week, I already saw the title of next episode. It's interesting. Next week is Revenge of the Cybermen. They're Ooh. back. We haven't had the Cybermen since the second Doctor. Hmm. So, let's, we're just going to go straight into it. So, yeah. And it does make you wonder, like... Is their time ring hijacked or something? Because, again, <laughs> we didn't see them get into the TARDIS. The TARDIS is still at, uh, was it, Nerva? Or whatever the the arc in space was. Oh. So that's where yeah. they last left the TARDIS. So eventually they're going to have to go back and get it. So we'll have to see. And I think, actually, that... Yeah. Four parts, and that will round out uh, Season 12, actually. Oh, okay. So, which is strange. It feels like such a fast season. So, uh, and we took a break in the middle of it, too. <laughs> oh, well. You got anything else? I got nothing. Then that is pretty much it. With all that being said, we're Alex and Dad from 7th Hour Films, and we will see you guys next time. Take care. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around to any of those. There's a playlist for all of our Doctor Who classic reactions, which does contain our original Genesis of the Daleks reaction when we didn't understand anything. And there's a bunch of other links on screen as well, and links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.